Farming with Dynamite, A Few Hints to Farmers, by DuPont. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Farming with Dynamite saves money, time, labor, removes stumps, boulders, hard pan, ensures new rich soil, increased acreage, easy ploughing, bigger yields. What is dynamite? Some farmers have a wrong idea about dynamite. They know it is a powerful explosive and believe it is dangerous to handle. Dynamite is very powerful, much more so than gunpowder, but is actually safer to handle. After more than a hundred years' experience in making and using explosives, we can truthfully state that by following simple directions with ordinary care, anyone can use our Red Cross Dynamite without harm. The purpose of this booklet is to tell you the wonderful value of the use of Red Cross Dynamite on the farm. If it interests you, as it surely will, and if you are progressive and ambitious, write for a copy of our Handbook of Explosives for Farmers, Planters and Ranchers, which will be sent free of charge and which tells you just how to use Red Cross Dynamite safely and easily and make it the greatest aid to profitable farming. We will be glad to correspond with you about any special requirements of your farm or give you any information you want. Write our nearest office and your letter will receive prompt, personal attention. Chief Uses of Dynamite on the Farm As farmers all over the country begin to understand the value of Red Cross Dynamite at their work, they are constantly reporting new uses for this powerful assistant. The chief uses are mentioned below, and are explained in detail further on. Complete instructions are furnished in the Handbook of Explosives for Farmers, Planters and Ranchers. 1. Clearing land of stumps, trees and boulders. 2. Breaking up hard pan, shale or clay subsoils. 3. Ploughing. 4. Planting and cultivating orchards. 5. Digging ditches, post holes, wells and reservoirs. 6. Road making and grading. 7. Excavating cellars and foundation trenches. 8. Regenerating old, worn out farms. Clearing land of stumps, trees and boulders. It is needless to tell you the advantages of clearing land. The stump-covered site of a former piece of woods is, as you know, new, rich soil that needs no fertilizer. You also know that pulling stumps with a machine is the hardest kind of work, liable to injure seriously your horses, and certain to require a lot of work to get rid of the stumps after pulling. Then, too, it leaves the field full of holes that must be filled, and ploughing the hard-packed soil around old roots is no joke. If instead of pulling the stumps you burn them out, the intense heat required destroys the chief fertile elements of the soil all around the fire. After all your hard work, you will leave a burned field instead of new fertile soil. You can dynamite all these stumps for about one-third the cost of pulling and chopping them up. The blast splits up the stump into firewood, removes all the dirt, breaks all the main roots, and loosens the soil for yards around. You can blast 50 stumps in the time it would take to pull and chop up one or two. One man can do all the work, if necessary. After all the stumps are all blasted out, you will have a new, rich field and easy to cultivate, requiring no fertilizer to yield bumper crops. If you want to remove a whole tree, Red Cross Dynamite will lift it bodily out of the ground and it will usually fall with the wind. When this is done, there is no stump left to remove. Boulders, which you are now obliged to plough around, can be broken up into easily handled blocks by a single blast. What it costs to blast out stumps. At the last Farming with Dynamite demonstration, held under the auspices of the Norfolk and Western Railroad at Iver, Virginia, on August 11th, 1910, one and one-half acres containing 46 stumps were cleared in one day at an expense of $18, including labour, or an average of 39 cents per stump. Records kept by the Long Island Railroad covering operations on their experimental farm showed that, including the wages of the men who did the work, the cost of blasting out stumps averaged about 16 cents per stump. 
Records kept of the costs of this work in different sections of the country show as follows. Locality and kind of stump, southern, pine stumps. Average diameter, 29 inches. Average cost per stump, 30 cents. Pennsylvania, apple, ash and chestnut stumps. Average diameter, 34 and a half inches. Average cost, 56 cents per stump. Michigan, white pine, maple and birch stump. Average diameter, 32 inches. Average cost, 47 cents per stump. Minnesota, birch, ash, spruce and pine stumps. Average diameter, 20 inches. Average cost, 16 cents per stump. Illinois, oak, walnut and gum stumps. Average diameter, 30 inches. Average cost per stump, 53 cents. Western, Fir, pine and cedar, average diameter 50 inches, average cost $1.13 per stump. Redwood, 8 feet and over, $2 and over per stump. Records kept by Professor A.J. McGuire, Superintendent Experimental Farm of the University of Minnesota, show even lower costs. Breaking up hard pan, shale or clay soils. This is probably the most important use of Red Cross Dynamite. It is possible, although difficult and expensive, to clear land of stumps and boulders in other ways, but it is not possible to break up hard pan or clay subsoils without the use of Red Cross Dynamite. Land that has a waterproof subsoil is practically worthless, as it holds the surface water in such quantities on level ground that the roots of trees and plants are rotted away. On hilly ground, it allows the surface water to run off, thus preventing the storage of moisture, with the result that vegetation dies quickly in hot weather. Such land can be rendered fertile at once by blasting with Red Cross Dynamite. The subsoil is completely broken up and the dry, dead topsoil converted into a rich loam for less than the amount of the taxes for a year or two. The following extract from the Topeka, Kansas Mail and Breeze proves the wonderful results of the use of dynamite. A few years ago, Mr. T. Williams brought a quarter section of land near Medicine Lodge in Barber County and conceiving the same idea that ex-Governor Crawford and others have, used dynamite in dealing with a hard subsoil. The land was overgrown with sunflowers and cockleburs and would have been considered dear at $10 per acre. It was underlaid with a hard subsoil that was almost impervious to water. Mr. Williams' idea was to loosen this subsoil with dynamite. He bored holes in the earth some three feet deep and about 40 feet apart, and in each hole placed a part of a stick of dynamite. The explosion of the dynamite loosened the hard subsoil and made a reservoir for the rains, which had formerly run off the land nearly as fast as they fell. On this quarter, there is now 100 acres of perhaps as fine alfalfa as can be found in the state Mr. Williams has refused $15,000 for the quarter and gathers a net income from his alfalfa of from $30 to $35 per acre every year. Last season, Mr. Williams proposed to the ladies of the Baptist Church that he would give them a load of hay, provided they would come out to the place, shock the hay, load it on wagons and haul it to town. They took him at his word and shocked and hauled to town two tons, which sold for $16.00. When the second crop was ready, the ladies came again and touched Mr. Williams for a little more than two tons, which sold as well as the first load. Plowing with dynamite. Ordinary plowing merely turns over the same old soil year after year, and constant decrease in crops is only prevented by rotation or expensive fertilizing. With Red Cross dynamite, you can break up the ground all over the field to a depth of two or three feet for less than the cost of adequate fertilizing and with better results. Fertilizing only improves the topsoil. Dynamiting renders available all the moisture and elements of growth throughout the entire depth of the blast. In an article by J.H. Caldwell of Spartanburg in uh, September 1910, Technical World magazine, he states that before the ground was broken up with dynamite, he planted his corn with stalks 18 inches apart in rows 4 feet apart and raised 90 bushels to the acre. After the ground was blasted, it was able to nourish stalks 6 inches apart in rows the same distance apart and to produce over 250 bushels to the acre. This means an increase of about 160 bushels to the acre 
every year for an original expense of $40 an acre for labor and explosives. F.G. Mouchen of Walton County, Georgia, reports that he has been raising crops of watermelons weighing from 50 to 60 pounds each on land blasted by exploding charges of about three ounces of dynamite in holes two and a half to three feet deep, spaced eight to ten feet apart. Planting and Cultivating Orchards In the orchard, Red Cross Dynamite not only saves much labor and time in planting the trees, but ensures the best growth and large yields. A man will spend an hour digging a tree hole that dynamite will excavate in an instant. The spaded hole will be hard all the way down, making it difficult for the transplanted roots to take hold. This is one of the chief reasons why transplanted trees so often die. Red Cross Dynamite not only excavates the required hole, but also loosens the ground for yards around, killing all grubs and forming a spongy reservoir for moisture. That is why trees planted in dynamited holes live and thrive. A whole row of tree holes can be excavated in one instance when charged with Red Cross Dynamite. Old trees are benefited by exploding small charges under them or between the rows. This keeps the ground loose and free from grubs. A well-known fruit grower reports that he planted peach trees some years ago to determine whether anything was to be gained by using dynamite. A number of trees were planted in holes by detonating a charge of explosive to make the hole, and others were planted in holes of the regulation size dug by hand. Three years later, the trees planted in the blasted holes were strong and healthy, each producing between five and six bushels of very fine peaches. The other trees, planted on the same ground, without blasting, bore no peaches, both fruit and leaves having been shriveled up and dropped off during the dry season. Digging ditches, post holes, wells and reservoirs. Excavating of any kind is slow, hard work when done with pick and shovel, especially in mixed ground containing large stones, roots, streaks of gravel or shale. Several rods of ditch can be excavated in an instant with dynamite, varying the size of each charge according to the nature of the ground at that point. And most of the dirt is thrown out by the blast and the remainder is broken up ready for the shovel. A Missourian advises us a ditch he had just blasted through a swamp for $100, which she says would have cost him $500 if dug in the usual way. On August 11th, 1910, at the demonstration at Iver, Virginia, above referred to, a ditch 85 feet in length, 3 feet deep and 4.5 feet wide at the top, was blasted with dynamite at a cost not exceeding 10 cents per yard, or about $2.75 for the entire work. Red Cross Dynamite is especially useful in excavating wells and reservoirs as it opens up all the springs in nearby ground. Road making and grading. Red Cross Dynamite is a big saver of time and labor in making new roads or leveling grades on old roads. Rock, shale, clay, gravel or sand can all be broken up with ease simply by varying the charge according to the nature of the ground and the depth of excavation desired. Excavating cellars and foundation trenches. This work can be done with Red Cross Dynamite in one-tenth the time required for hand and team shoveling, and the cost of the dynamite is but a fraction of the value of the labor saved. Regenerating old worn-out farms. All over the eastern and southern sections of the United States are farms and plantations, once rich, fertile and profitable, but now either abandoned or so unproductive as to be almost worthless. The chief trouble with these farms is that the topsoil is worked out. Red Cross Dynamite can be used with complete success to turn up an entirely fresh, fertile soil and convert a $10 an acre worked out farm into land worth $50 to $100 an acre. The cost in dynamite for this conversion would be about $10 to $15 an acre, according to the nature of the soil. This matter is worthy of as much consideration on the part of farmers and all other concerned with national resources as the reclamation of desert areas in the West. 
Surely it is as important to restore the productiveness of established farms in the east as it is to open up new fertile fields in the west and southwest. If any portion of your farm is not productive, it is probable that Red Cross Dynamite can make it productive. The leading railroads of the country are taking the greatest interest in the increasing use of dynamite on the farm because they know by actual results that it means more and better crops, bigger shipments and greater prosperity all along their lines. Mr H.B. Fullerton, Director, Agricultural Development of the Long Island Railroad Company, is one of the pioneers in this movement and in an article entitled Reclaiming Wasteland on Long Island, his wife, Edith Loring Fullerton graphically describes the use of dynamite in the preparation of wasteland for cultivation. How can we help you? For more than a hundred years, we have been making and selling explosives. We maintain a highly skilled core of chemists, explosive specialists and field representatives whose sole duties are to study conditions and devise means for handling them. If there is any soil condition on your farm that we have not mentioned and which you think might be remedied or improved by dynamite, please write us all about it. There will be no charge for the information we will send you. In fact, we will be much obliged to you for giving us the opportunity to study any peculiar condition. Bear in mind that the age, reputation and high standing of this company are ample assurance that any statements made by us are conservative and based on long and varied experience. In any case, we want you to write for our Handbook of Explosives for Farmers, Planters and Ranchers, which we send out only on request, as it is too valuable to send to anyone not interested enough to ask for it. Asking for it puts you under no obligation to us except to read it. We believe that when you have read it, you will understand how simple, safe and economical the use of Red Cross Dynamite is and that you will find many ways to save and make money with its aid. E.I. DuPont de Nemours Powder Company, Wilmington, Delaware, November 1910 End of Farming with Dynamite A Few Hints to Farmers by DuPont